Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon to all. So I am Dr. Anish, uh, uh, specialist endocrinologist at HNC uh, Cosmopolitan Clinic Abu Ghraib. So many times people ask me what is the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes or what is the difference and what does it make, what difference does it make in management. So I would like to clarify, type 1 diabetes basically occurs in children and in young adolescents. It's because the pan there is absolute deficiency of insulin because their pancreas is not at all producing insulin. It is as a part of the autoimmune destruction of the beta cells in the thyroid, beta cells in the pancreas. So the beta cells are the cells in the pancreas which secrete insulin. So as a part of the autoimmune process, the body will start producing uh, autoantibodies against the pancreatic beta cell, which results in ultimate destruction of the beta cells. So there will be no beta cells in type 1 diabetes to produce uh, insulin. By the time the patient comes to you with blood sugars of 350, 400, they, they, they have no beta cells to produce insulin. So uh, uh, when you diagnose type 1 diabetes, sad, uh, as a doctor I feel very sad because these patients need to take insulin uh, uh, lifelong. So we can, they, there is um, relatively more newer insulins coming but they need some form of insulin therapy as a lifelong uh, mode of treatment. Now coming to type 2 diabetes. So type 2 diabetes is a diabetes which occurs in the late uh, uh, period, say around 30s or 40. Previously it was thought to be in 40 and 50 years of age but now with the advent of sedentary lifestyle and low physical activity and the advent of fast foods, it has been shifted from 40 to 50 to 30s to 40 years of age. So in that what happens is the pancreas is producing little bit of insulin but not enough to keep the blood sugars under control and the, um, the insulin which is produced is not able to act in the tissues because there is resistance, the, uh, there is insulin resistance in the tissue so that the tissues can't take the uh, glucose into the, uh, uh, from the blood into the tissues and utilize it. There is insulin receptor, uh, there is insulin resistance at the receptor level. So what happens is when the insulin uh, acts on the uh, insulin is released in the blood and it acts on the insulin receptors in the tissues and when it acts on the insulin receptors in the tissues the glucose is being taken into the tissues and it is utilized in the tissues for as a part of energy metabolism when there is insulin resistance the, uh, the insulin is not able to act on the tissues and the glucose is not utilized in the tissues for energy metabolism like uh, the tissues which I mean is basically in the muscle so in type 2 diabetes what happens the insulin secreted is less and whatever amount is secreted is not able to act so uh, as a part of treatment why you want to differentiate in type 1 and type 2 is type 2 in the initial phases or uh, even up to 10 or 15 years you can treat with drugs so these there are drugs these are drugs which either will increase the insulin secretion or which will reduce the insulin resistance. So like the one which we use like sulfonylureas are able to increase the insulin secretion and the drugs like metformin uh, which are and or pioglitazone are insulin sensitizers. They facilitate the action of uh, uh, insulin. Uh, so this is why the, the significance of difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. In type 1 as a part of treatment they require lifelong insulin. In type 2 diabetes, initially you can treat with uh, uh, drugs, uh, either uh, increasing insulin secretion drugs or reducing insulin resistant drugs. And later in the course of illness, when they are not controlled with uh, uh, ample drugs, you can switch over these patients at the late stage of type 2 diabetes to insulin. So, thank you.